Hello, everyone. My name is Jovan Komartovic, and I will now present our paper titled Revisiting Tendermint, Design Trade-offs, Accountability, and Practical Use. This paper, we discuss Tendermint, one of the most well-known deterministic Byzantine consensus protocols. This is a joint work with Ethan Bachman, Charko Milosevic, Adi Serendinsky, Josef Wider, and my PhD supervisor, Rashid Garou. First, let me explain why we decided to take a closer look in the Tendermint consensus protocol. Consensus is one of the most fundamental primitives of distributed computing. It allows processes to decide on a common value. There are two traditional scenarios in which you would like to use consensus. First, there is state machine replication. Here, all servers agree using the consensus primitive on the next command to execute. Second, you can use consensus to implement a blockchain. Here, all parties agree on the next block of transactions using the consensus primitive, thus building a chain of blocks. Tendermint, as I have already mentioned, is a deterministic consensus protocol. A noteworthy deployment of Tendermint called Cosmos Hub has been in continuous operation since 2019. While successful in practice, Tendermint does not have a definitive description in the literature. This is what we are trying to fix with our paper. Namely, we contrast Tendermint with other major consensus algorithms like PBFT and Hot Stuff. Furthermore, we discuss unique design choices of Tendermint. And lastly, we briefly discuss the accountability support of Tendermint. I will start by presenting the overview of Tendermint. Tendermint is a Byzantine resilient consensus protocol which tolerates less than 33% of all processes being faulted. Tendermint draws inspiration from two seminal consensus algorithms. The first one is the DLS algorithm introduced by Dwork, Lynch, and Stockmeyer. The second algorithm is PBFT, introduced by Castro and Lisco. Tendermint operates in partial synchrony. Roughly speaking, a partially synchronous system is a system that behaves asynchronously until time known as global stabilization time. And after this time, it behaves synchronously. During the asynchronous period, messages can arbitrarily be delayed, whereas during synchrony, there exists an upper bound on message delays. Importantly, Tendermint uses gossip as a communication primitive. Usually, algorithms assume pairwise links processes used to communicate. As I will explain in the rest of the talk, PBFT and hot stuff assume pairwise links. However, Tendermint builds on top of a gossip network. Gossip allows processes to disseminate information among themselves in an indirect manner. Namely, if a correct process receives a message M, it is guaranteed that every correct process will eventually receive M. Exactly gossip communication primitive ensures that the logic of the Tendermint algorithm is simple and concise. An execution of Tendermint proceeds in rounds. Each round has its proposer who is responsible to drive the system towards a decision. Once the system becomes synchronous and the proposer is correct, the proposer indeed ensures that everyone decides. A round consists of three phases, as you can see here. First, the, pro 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 the proposer broadcasts its proposal. Upon receiving a proposal from the proposer, each process checks whether it can support the received value. If it can, the process broadcasts a pre-vote message for the value. Upon receiving two F plus one pre-vote messages for the same value, the process broadcasts a pre-commit message. Finally, once the process receives two F plus one pre-commit messages for a value, it decides that value. The bit complexity per round, in other words, the number of bits correct processes send in a round is quadratic as each sent message is of constant size. Given that Tendermint is Byzantine resilient, processes must be able to move to new rounds. For example, the proposer of a round can be Byzantine and simply not communicate with processes. If processes are unable to move to a new round and try again to decide, they would be stuck forever in a round which does not allow them to decide. Now, before processes can start a new round, they must ensure that they have learned all important facts about the previous rounds. This is done in a round change sub protocol. Why is round change important? Imagine that the correct process A decides a value V in the first round. Now, if processes do not learn, 
that they decided V in the first round, they can allow some other value V prime to be eligible for decision in the second round. Hence, some other correct process V might decide V prime in the second round, thus violating the agreement property of consensus. Usually, round change sub protocols have the following pattern. All processes send their estimate of a value that should be decided to the leader of the next round. Now the leader analyzes the received values and chooses one to propose. The main distinguishing feature of Tendermint is that it does not have explicit round change sub protocol. To allow this, Tendermint builds upon the following insight. If a correct process P has received messages that allow it to estimate value V as a potential decision value, due to the guarantees of the Gaussian primitive, the new leader L will receive the exact same messages without having P explicitly sending those messages to leader L. Therefore, gossip allows Tendermint not to have an explicit round change sub protocol. However, this does not come for free. Namely, Tendermint sacrifices optimistic responsiveness. A protocol is optimistically responsive if, once the system becomes synchronous and a correct leader is in charge, the leader drives the system towards a decision in time depending only on the actual message delays and not depending on the upper bound of message delays. Tendermint is not optimistically responsive as a new leader must wait for delta time where delta is the upper bound of message delays in order to be sure that it has not missed any relevant information for pre from previous views. Full details of the Tendermint protocol are given in the paper called the latest gossip on BFT consensus. We strongly encourage you to read that paper. Now that we have seen how Tendermint roughly works, I will compare Tendermint with PBFT and hot stuff. As Tendermint, PBFT is a Byzantine resilient consensus protocol, which tolerates less than 33% of all processes being faulty. It was introduced by Castro and Leskov. PBFT as Tendermint operates in partial synchrony. In contrast to Tendermint, PBFT assumes pairwise lengths. PBFT as Tendermint proceeds in rounds. However, authors of PBFT calls rounds views. So strictly speaking, PBFT proceeds in views. Each view has its leader whose responsibility is to drive the system towards a decision. Our view in PBFT as in Tendermint consists of three phases, as you can see here. The bit complexity per view is cubic as pre prepared messages are of size O of n square bits. As for the view change, the PBFT has an explicit view change sub protocol. Its complexity, bit complexity, is cubic. The reason for that is that each correct process needs to send its estimate to the leader along with a proof that the estimate is validly obtained. Such a proof is of size O of n. Then the leader, when proposing its value in the first phase of a view, includes received proofs from all n processes, which amounts to O of n square bits per message. Given that pre prepared messages are broadcast, the bit complexity of the view change sub protocol is cubic. However, PPFT does ensure optimistic responsiveness. Full details of the PPFT protocol are given in the paper Practical Byzantine Fault Tolerance. As Tendermint, Hot Stuff is a Byzantine resilient consensus protocol which tolerates less than 33% of fault processes being faulty. Hot stuff as Tendermint operates in partial synchrony. In contrast to Tendermint, hot stuff assumes pairwise links as PBFT does. Hot stuff as PBFT proceeds in views. Each view has its leader whose responsibility is to drive the system towards a decision. A view in hot stuff consists of seven phases. Notice that in hot stuff, there is no all to all communication pattern. Processes rather communicate in all to leader, leader to all communication pattern, as you can see here. Hot stuff does this to ensure that each view has a linear bit complexity. In other words, correct processes in each view send at most O of n bits in total. As for the view change, hot stuff has an explicit view change sub protocol. Its bit complexity is linear. The reason for this is that each correct process needs to send its estimate to the leader along with the proof that the estimate is validly obtained. 
Such a proof is of size O of one. We call that the size of this proof in PPFT is O of n. Then the leader when proposing its value in the first phase only sends its proposed value along with the proof that only that value is sound. Again, this proof is of size O of one. Hence the view change subprotocol of hot stuff is indeed linear. Also hot stuff as PBFT ensures optimistic responsiveness. Full details of the hot stuff protocol are given in their paper, hot stuff, PBFT consensus with linearity and responsiveness. To summarize, I will present a table comparing these three proper protocols, PBFT, hot stuff and Tandem. All three protocols operate in the partially synchronous model. All three protocols are Byzantine resilient and tolerate less than 33% of Byzantine processes. PBFT and hot stuff assume pairwise links, whereas Tendermint uses gossip as a communication primitive. The best possible scenario of PBFT and Tendermint decide in three message delays. On the other hand, hot stuff decides in seven message delays. However, in this best possible scenario, hot stuff achieves linear bit complexity. Such scenario, both Tendermint and PBFT has, have quadratic bit complexity. PBFT and hot stuff ensure optimistic responsiveness, whereas Tendermint does not. As the recovery subprotocol, PBFT and hot stuff use an explicit view change subprotocol. Tendermint uses an implicit round change subprotocol. Finally, the bit complexity of the view change subprotocol in PBFT is cubic, whereas it is linear in hot stuff. On the other hand, since Tendermint does not have an explicit round change protocol, its bit complexity is zero. I will now devote some time to explaining how Tendermint works in practice. As we have already explained, Tendermint is a Byzantine consensus protocol and it can be used to build blockchains. An application built on top of Tendermint-based blockchain communicates with Tendermint via Application Blockchain Interface, or ABCI. That means that Tendermint can be used with different applications. Application running on top of Tendermint must provide some control information to Tendermint. For example, it needs to provide the validator set, the set of participants of the next consensus instance. Also, the application provides the voting power to each validator. A validator is a participant of the validator set. Let us take a closer look at validator sets. As already mentioned, the validator set is responsible for one instance of Tendermint consensus. In other words, a validator set is responsible for processing one block of transactions in Tendermint-based blockchain. Now, as I have stated at the beginning of the presentation, Tendermint algorithm instructs processes to do something upon receiving some number of messages. For example, they decide upon receiving two F plus one pre-commit messages. In practice, Tendermint replaces the number of processes with their cumulative voting power. So a process actually decides upon receiving pre-commit messages from processes whose cumulative voting power is two F plus one. Note that there could be less than two F plus one processes whose cumulative voting power is 2F plus one. If you remember, each round in Tendermint algorithm has its proposal. Mapping from a round to its proposal is done actually in the weighted round robin fashion. What does this mean? This means that during a sequence of N rounds, each validator is the proposer in S rounds, where S is the voting power of the validator. I want to also emphasize that there are other important processes in any deployment of Tendermint. First, we have sentry processes. A sentry process acts as a proxy between the validator and the rest of the network, protecting the validator from inbound traffic or DDoS attacks. Also, the gossip network is permissionless. Therefore, the overall, overall network is substantially more extensive than just the set of validators. For example, Observations from Cosmos Hub reveal that there are roughly 507, uh, 570 peers discoverable, discoverable by their IP, while the network is estimated to count around 900 total peers. Finally, I will devote a few minutes to the accountability support of Tandem. First, 
What is accountability? Well, it is a property that guarantees, property of consensus, that guarantees that some faulty processes are detected in a case of disagreement among correct processes. So if two correct processes decide different values, thus violating the agreement property of consensus, some faulty processes responsible for disagreement are detected, and later on they can be punished. Let me just underline that a disagreement is possible only if the assumed security model of tendermint is violated. In particular, a disagreement in tendermint is possible only if we have more than F faults. In other words, more than 33% of all processes being faulty. If we have less than 33% of faulty processes, then disagreement cannot happen in tandem. As you can see, this is a valuable property in the blockchain space as disagreement can cause money loss for some users. In this case, we would like to detect who caused the disagreement and punish those processes. Analysis of Tendermint shows that if correct processes disagree, then some faulty processes have either equivocated, meaning supported multiple values, or suffered amnesia. Amnesia means that a process forgot about the value it vouched to support. In other words, it invalidly changed its opinion on which value should be decided. Amnesia is hard to deal with. At least it is harder to deal with than the equivocation. If a process equivocates, we will eventually obtain messages that show that the process supported conflicting values. But in the case of amnesia, this approach cannot work. Therefore, we need to be careful in addressing the amnesia attack. In addressing the amnesia attacks, we got inspired by the paper named BFT Protocol Forensics. Namely, we added two changes to the original Tendermint protocol, and we were, as I mentioned, inspired by the uh, previously mentioned paper. First, change that we uh, uh, implemented is the following one. We changed the format of pre-vote messages. Namely, we included one more field in the pre-vote messages. And second, we slightly changed the rule that regulates whether a process supports or receives proposal from the leader. In other words, a process decides whether to send a pre-vote message based on a slightly modified logic. We are currently working on the formal write-up of the accountable tendermint protocol, which we will uh, post online soon. All the formal details will be included there. In this talk, we briefly present the tendermint, a deterministic business and consensus protocol. I discussed its design choices and compared it to the PPFT and hot stuff. The main difference from PPFT and hot stuff is that tendermint operates on top of a gossip network instead of pairwise links. The algorithmic level that allows Tendermint not to have the explicit recovery sub protocol which Hotstuff and PBFT have. I would like to conclude the talk with an invitation to read our paper. Thank you all for your attention.